Okay, so now that you've read a little bit about elementary matrices, one really powerful tool that we can use them for is we can write any invertible matrix as a product of elementary matrices. So I want to go through an example and show you how we're going to do this. So here's just a random matrix I came up with. It has 1, 0, 2, right, 0, 0, 1 as its second row, and 0, 3, 0 as its third row. Alright, and I've gone through the initial steps already of row reducing the matrix here. Um, because we have done that already in previous videos and we've practiced it a bunch. Um, but it's another task. We're going to need to know how to do it um, for questions like this. So then our next step is to um, write each one of these elementary row operations as an elementary matrix. So for this example, our writing our elementary row operations as matrices, we get E1, E2, and E3. So R in this case is 3. So E1 would be the elementary matrix obtained by swapping the second and third rows of the identity matrix. So the first row remains unchanged, the second row is replaced with the third, and the third row is replaced with the second. Right. E2 then, since we're doing one third of row two, well that's exactly what we do to the identity matrix. Zero, 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 one. Right. And E3 is taking row one and subtracting two row threes. So row one was one zero zero. I'll just reference this this example above. And we're subtracting two row threes, so that means that we're going to end up with something that looks like one, zero, negative two in the first row, because that's the one we're replacing, and then the second and the third rows are staying the same, because we are not changing those at all. So those are our three elementary matrices, and the reason that we can write it like this, or we write them, is because we can say, then starting, let's see, if A is our original matrix, 1, 0, 2, 0, 0, 1, 0, 3, 0, to apply these operations to the rows, we multiply on the left by the matrix. So the first operation we did was swap row 2 and 3, so that's the elementary matrix that's going to be closest to the matrix A. And then the second one, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, third, 0, 0, 0, 1. And then lastly, we have the third elementary operation we did. Okay. And in fact, if you go through the steps of multiplying these things together, you will indeed get the identity matrix, the thing that we row reduced it to. And you can get each intermediate step. So if you multiply these two matrices, the first two here, you will get um, the second matrix in our row reducing step. Then if you multiply in the third matrix there, you'll get the third matrix in our row reducing step. And lastly, if you multiply all four of these, you will indeed get the identity matrix as we want. Okay, so the next step in writing A as the product of elementary matrices is we need to find the inverse of each of these elementary matrices. Alright, E1, E2, and E3. So E1 was the first one that we multiplied A by. The inverse of swapping two rows, the way that we undo swapping two rows, is swapping them back. So the inverse of E1 is just the same thing as it was to start with. Alright, E2 inverse, we multiplied row 2 by a third, so to undo the operation of multiplying by a third, well, you should multiply by 3. Okay, and lastly, E3 was the operation of adding 
or subtracting 2 of row 3 from row 1. So the opposite of that is adding 2 of row 3 to row 1. And you can test this out to make sure that these actually are inverses. For example, if we take E3 here and E3 inverse, we should be able to do E3 times E3 inverse and get the identity matrix. Right? So test that out and make sure that works and make sure you believe it. All right. And then our last step of writing A as a product of elementary matrices. So let's remember that we have E. Um, uh, 3, E2, E1 times A is the identity matrix. We want to isolate A because we want to write A as a product. So what we're going to do is we're going to first multiply on the left by E3 inverse. And remember it's very, very precise that we're multiplying on the left by this, this matrix. So we do an E3 inverse right here. All right, so those two will cancel. We move on to the next step. Let's do an E2 inverse. E2 inverse. All right, so that'll cancel with the E2. And then lastly, we're just left with an E1 inverse and an E1 inverse. All right, and those will cancel. So all we're left on the, with on the left side is A, and on the right side, well, we could leave the identity matrix there, but it's kind of like multiplying by one. It'd be like leaving one when you're writing something out as a product of numbers. So A is the product of those three elementary matrices in that order. So if we write it out specifically, so E1 inverse was again the swapping of the two rows the second and third row. E2 inverse was multiplying the second row by 3. And E3 inverse was adding 2 of row 3 to row 1. Okay, so if you multiply those together, you will indeed get A. All right, excellent. Enjoy and have a good one.